New season. I think it's time we treated ourselves to a new ensign. Welcome to the Marmanor, which is a small inland sea just south of Alicante. Yes, it's lovely to be back out at anchor again. And we're probably going to be here for a couple of days because there's some bad weather coming through. One of the things about being early in the season in the Med is you can't guarantee the weather. So we're hiding, really. But we are launching season two and we've made a couple of changes. The first one is that we've joined Patreon, or rather we're asking you to join our Patreon site. We've got some stuff on there already, some videos, um, technical videos, extra interviews, things that we thought people might be interested in. So we want to just keep things going. Yeah, there's going to be lots of extras, but actually even for the episodes, uh, we're going to do more of that as well. It's going to come out now once a fortnight on a Thursday at six o'clock, I think we're going to say. Absolutely, six o'clock. It's six o'clock, so I hope you like this first film. Coming up, out at sea and heading east, where we pretty much have the place to ourselves. Exploring the islands in the Mar Menor. Our dinghy is finally fixed and very oh, quiet and homeschooling on a catamaran. What a great way to get an education. We left Cartagena on a sunny morning without a cloud in the sky. A little apprehensive, but a new season, a new adventure. Well, we're really off then. <laughs> Leaving Cartagena where we've had really a nice, a nice winter. Met some really nice people, hope to catch up with them again um, when we get to the Balearics. It's a nice day, good breeze, but what can you ask for? A cup of tea to start and that fresh sea air. At this time of year, the weather can change very quickly. A couple of hours later, and a sea mist is on the horizon. Yeah, that's, that's amazing, isn't it? What's that for? <laughs> it's a sea mist chasing us. <laughs> What's it gonna, is it going to follow us around the corner? <laughs> Good to keep a coat close at hand, just in case. Well, we didn't see a forecast for sea mist, but there's certainly a forecast for strong winds over the next couple of days. That is the problem really with sailing this early in the season. You never know what you're going to get, but if you're just aware of it, it does mean that you uh, have got the place to yourselves. And we're going to come through the little narrow entrance here uh, and probably hide down underneath this island. It's uh, called the Isla Mayor and uh, the wind's going to be strong gale force from the northwest so we should get some shelter just in here we've just got to watch out for the for the rocks but uh, that's a good thing about having islands in here we can go around uh, there's going to be a couple of days of wind so we'll just have to dodge around the island to get in the lee when we need to uh, and then it should calm down and we can explore a bit we're just coming up to the entrance to the marmanor now the bridge goes up every two hours on the even hour so we hope to get up um, and under it at four o'clock where we're on target for that at the moment we're due to be there at uh, seven minutes to four um, it's lovely and sunny again thank goodness for that we can actually see the mist was a little bit unsettling but it's it's cleared up now 
Um, so, looking forward to a few days in the Marmanor. It's uh, quite built up, as you can see. It's going. It is. It's nice just to be relaxing out at anchor. Believe it or not, even with the whole winter, the boat job schedule was getting pretty frenetic by the end. There will be lots of tech videos coming out, so do keep a look out for them if it's what you're into. Rigging checks happen all year round, but I did have a repair to do that meant removing the forestay. Yes, I finally managed a proper repair on the furler this winter. Rigging jobs always make me a bit nervous, but it's not nearly as scary as looking at what you might be faced with on a wooden boat. This is Tim's boat, Amy Rose, that you might remember from episode 7. She has a mahogany hull that needs a few boards replacing and some soft spots seen to. When you see how easily that, that goes in. There are still craftsmen around that can handle this though, and she's as good as new in no time. The very last minute job was moving the framing for the solar panels back to make room for another. It's true what they say, you can never have enough solar. There's a very good local stainless steel fabricator and he's making me an extra solar arch out of thick tubing which will carry another 350 watt panel and help support the existing structure. Just got to make space. If you've seen the video on solar you'll know I didn't weld the joints so I'm able to rejig the frame to fit, eventually. Uh, see these catamarans, how many uh Solar panels they can get on their roofs. Very jealous. One of those cats is owned by Amelie's parents, Paul and Debbie. Amelie is in her final year at school in Australia, and so she's homeschooling. Sailing is new for all of them, but they've taken to it like, well, like ducks to water. And before you ask, Debbie broke her wrist ice skating. It still feels very new. Yes, and we're trying to keep it new, I think, just as much as possible, because yeah. it's been nine months, I think. It's been right. nine months, so. Yeah, there's not many extras in here that we had to put in. We've maybe put in the microwave, um, oh, yeah. but actually this is how it how it is. Um, we've got a fridge freezer. You have got we've everything. Got, that's the double fridge there, and then a freezer over there. Right. So we've uh, added okay, those okay. in. And are you enjoying it? Yes, very much so. It's brilliant. It's brilliant because it's like in-out living here and um, it's a really good kitchen area. What's it like to sail? Um, obviously the principles are exactly the same. Yeah. Um, you do get some feel but not as anywhere near as much as you do on a monohull. So we just sit at the helm and because we're new to it, we're both sat at the helm normally just discussing it all day, every day while we're out sailing. Yeah. What sails should we have up and uh, when should we bring them down? More to the and point. You seem to, I mean, you get great vision here, don't you? Even from, from, from back here, through yeah. the windows. I mean, I've been on cats where, you know, you, behind the bulkhead, you don't really see, you've mm. got to pop up over it. Yeah. Was that something that, I mean, what, what was your criteria for sailing-wise for the cat? What, what, what were you looking at? Yeah, that all-round vision, especially yeah. from the helm, we can see. So you've got the nice fly bridge yeah. here. Unfortunately, there's a bicycle in the way. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't all have the fly bridge, do you? They get. Um, no. So I mean, you get you get really nice. So we've got, got the best of both here. worlds yeah. because um, I can see most of the corners of the boat. Yeah. Except obviously the back over there. Yeah. Um, but also, if there's people down there, I'm still involved in the conversation. With yeah. Them. What brought you then to think? Okay, I'm going to come from Australia to Europe, buy a boat. I mean, it's a massive change. How, how, just take me through how that came about. We started watching YouTube, simple as that. We watched a few people doing this exact same adventure and thought, oh, we could do that in the future. 
So we decided to look into maybe in about 10 or 15 years time, that's what we were gonna do. Um, Debbie's always thought about doing this sort of thing before, just a little boat on the Whit Sundays or something like that. Then we started watching people like the Vagabond and Cheeky Monkey who had similar boats. And we realized, yeah, we could do that. So we went down to a couple of boat shows uh, went to the Gold Coast Boat Show, saw a similar sort of boat to this. We saw this boat there, we? Didn't saw this we? actual model there. Um, and started watching more and more YouTube videos. And then we thought, well, we don't really want to leave it that late because we're going to be too old to learn to sail because we've never sailed before. So we decided to go down to the Sydney Boat Show. That was six weeks later. Six weeks later, stage. we went down to the Sydney Boat In Show. Our 10 year plan. <laughs> bought the boat <laughs> because we decided that 10 years was too long so we leave it for five years um, and there was they gave us many options list, to yeah. buy the boat yeah. in the future um, the only downside was because Amelie was still at school and then she put her hand up and said <laughs> actually I don't mind doing homeschooling so that brought the adventure forward as soon as we could get the boat so really Amelie then it's all down to you that's why you're here yeah, yeah. yes and how's the homeschooling going? Yeah, really, really good. It's so much better than regular school for me. Um, and I've definitely noticed like a lot of improvement from like grades and stuff like that. So, yeah. So how do, how do you do it? Your parents tell me they don't get involved. It's just <laughs> yeah. you. So um, the school has a website called Blackboard and that's where the teachers record their lessons and they upload it to the Blackboard. And then, um, because of the time difference from Australia to wherever we are, like in Spain, I'll watch it the next day. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like a visual recording. So I can see that everything that they're putting up on their board and they can put all like the math problems and then work it out on the board. Um, and then I just watch it, uh, the recording of it. You did buy a boat remotely, the other side of the world. Yes. How did, how did that work out? I mean, and, and the new boat thing, where did that come into the equation, new versus an older boat? What's... Because we were new to it ourselves, mm. we wouldn't know how to fix because we wouldn't know what we were looking at to fix. We didn't so, know what we didn't know, exactly. did we? So we thought... So we had a very, so. very good broker in Australia who went through all the options list. Because when you're buying a boat like this, we didn't realise you don't even get an anchor. You So if you've never right. bought an anchor before, what anchor do you buy? He went through meticulously a huge Excel list of everything that was all the different options for the boat. And I think pretty much it's 100% spot on. Yeah. Where did the, the, the multi-hole versus monohole thing come in? Was that, were monoholes off the table Absolutely. straight from the start? They were. We definitely wanted yeah. a cast Simply because Sorry. we knew that <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be living on this boat for the next 10, 15 years. You know, it's just yeah. all about, it's our home on the water. And if you've never sailed before. Yes, I you know, think because we've never sailed before. Yeah. I did a two week sailing course on a monohull. And don't get me wrong, the romanticism of heeling over and sailing at high speed was amazing. But when we did a bit of research, it turns out that when you're in the cruising life, about 5% of your time is out there sailing. Just as well, there's plenty to do in Cartagena then. I'm beginning to think the festivals go on all year round. The cafes are always full. There are endless opportunities to dress up and dance. This street party was in February. though the time has come to move on and that means provisioning a trip to the market fresh fruit and vegetables all at good prices and fish once we set sail Steve's determined we will catch our own but in the meantime well let's just say this might be the last good fish dinner for a while don't tell Steve I said that taking care of my beers down there. I am, they're all being packed in with lots of lovely kitchen roll. Never can have too this, much kitchen roll. This is the best beer we've found on our trip so far. 
If anyone else wants any, it's bad luck because Sue's bought it all. <laughs> anyway, along with our UHT milk, which is our emergency milk, which is actually quite nice. Everyone drinks it around here, so it's absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, I'm just packing some things in and then we're ready to go, pretty much. And here we are, anchored out in the Marmanor. It really is a lovely place to chill out while we plan for the next few months. Short term though, it's time for dinner. <laughs> yeah, it should be ready soon. Wow, <laughs> a big fish. So that's a fish we got from the market. That is, a, that is it, it's enormous. It just looks so much bigger when it it's is. on the plate. I put rosemary in it because I couldn't find the tarragon. <laughs> it tastes really quite nice with rosemary. Okay, it will be a bit strong. No, it's quite a, it's quite a, a chunky fish this. We don't know what it is though, do we? No. We're going to have to get better at uh, identifying fishes in the market nice. or indeed in the sea. Yeah, fair enough. And after dinner, some rather wobbly yoga. This must be good for balance, surely. The next day is one we've been looking forward to for months, our winter investment and a rather large part of our sailing budget has been spent on a new outboard motor, one that actually works. So if you watch series one, you'll know we had quite a lot of problems with our dinghy. Outboard's not going. Thank you to our rescue. What's your name? Plugs out. We did. It broke. Well, <laughs> well, not the dinghy so much as the outboard. It did. And I'd love to be able to tell you that we stripped it all down and it's now as good as new. It's working you did perfectly. did strip it all down a million times. I did, but it didn't work <laughs> and it was beyond hope. So now we have this. Yes, it's an electric outboard and it's marvellous. We, uh, we it's thought... very quiet and really <laughs> sensitive, so I'm still getting used to it. Yeah, it's it actually just... does what I ask it to. <laughs> and it goes in reverse without having to squizzle it all the way around. You just turn the throttle the other way, and lo and behold, <laughs> <laughs> you go backwards quite fast if you do it quickly like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is very subtle. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> now so, I don't know why we go backwards. I think once we've got to grips with this, <laughs> we will do a proper test on it. We will. But to begin with, I mean, the reasons we got it, let's let's go go over towards the shore. Are, I backwards. keep going backwards now. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. I'm it's, like a, <laughs> it's like a motorbike, so you do it that way. Yeah, yeah. I'm go so with my nose. All right, so we're, so we're going to land over there. Yep. Okay, let's yeah, turn yeah, it around. Yeah, I'll turn it for that. It's well, really sensitive. That's the key thing that I've found. It's really sensitive. Yeah, you'll get used to that, forwards and backwards. It's not as light as some of the others, but it's still much lighter than, a, than an outboard, which is one of the reasons that we wanted this. I mean, we would have had to go nowadays to a, a four-stroke, and that it was difficult enough with the two-stroke, getting it off the stern rail and bringing it down. We had it real was, problems, yeah, didn't we? we really did. So now with the this, trial, it's time. one hand. You, you can take the battery off. You can see it's detachable here. The battery comes off. And the battery's quite light anyway, but you just hand that down and then you can just in one hand lift the, the outboard down. So, you know, it seems like it's going to be a, a great thing, but as I say, we'll, yeah. we'll test it out. And Range. no petrol on board. No petrol on board, yeah. I mean, carrying, no carrying petrol on board's always horrible. Mm. We've got an outside locker we can put it in, but... I never like carrying petrol. Now we never have to. I've sold the petrol can. It's never going to be on board again. You sold the outboard as well. I've sold the outboard. No, no, I gave it away, actually. Oh. <laughs> someone, someone wanted knows it. How I difficult. put it out for free and someone <laughs> someone wanted it. So yeah, brilliant. And we'll let you know how this goes. Meanwhile, let's go and explore. Yeah, yeah, we're off. I'm not going to go too fast. Is that, That's is that too fast? The thing to remember with batteries is you can't go too far without recharging. So for our first trip, we were out for about an hour. What we found is you can go much further if you don't go everywhere at full throttle.
think the seagulls are taking exception to us coming on their island. Gee, it's very noisy, isn't it? <laughs> they don't like it. The seagulls saw us off. One thing I didn't realise actually when we first came here is how shallow it is. Mm. It's a maximum of four metres, even in the middle. Yeah, it reminds me of when we had the boat in Holland, in the Markermere, mm. same, same thing. You can be out in the middle of this, uh, hardly seeing the land, and then there's nothing underneath you. And here this sea gets very warm in, in the summer because it's, it's so shallow. And at the moment it's gone a bit green and slightly smelly. It sort of reminds me of England when the tide's out. So we didn't go swimming, but we are moving in a couple of days. We're going up the Spanish coast and then across to the Balearics. So yeah, probably, probably to Mallorca. Mallorca. Probably Mallorca and then uh, Minorca and then we'll just carry on from there, see where the wind takes us. So thank you for watching and keep following.